going back to that list, someone that arguably could have been on this. Do people find Keith Lee funny? Or is it just like... Uh, I think more com- entertaining than funny. It, it, I wonder if entertaining is like... Can you break down entertaining into subcategories? Like, what is entertaining at its, va- at its core? You what makes something interesting? enjoy watching them consistently and... I don't know. You're not you're bored by them. You're just you're just entertained. I don't know a better way to put it. Where what is the definition of being entertained? You laugh. You don't feel like you wasted all your time. You feel like you gained something from the experience, if it, even if because just... dog, we're not. Come on, are we really gonna define? I, I, I won't. But I'm just saying, like it could was like one of those things. I think entertaining has to is this like a a broad thing in the sub things I'm entertained because something is informative something is uh, inter- uh funny because something oh, is just make you feel good cuz like something is entertaining feel... bro I don't I I don't mm, think it's deeper it's, than that it's honest. deeper it's definitely deeper why why do you wa- why do you watch anime why do you watch anything why do you read manga because of action what because you like watching and enjoying and experiencing that action and you're entertained right yeah but I think I, I think, think action. Than that. I think a, I think action and thrill is something. Is like a a deeper component to entertaining. Not everything I find entertaining, and you guys would agree. Not everything you find entertaining is just because of something blanket. It's because of you find it funny, you find it informative, you find it thrilling, you find it compelling. Like there are different aspects. Of thing, but huh? compelling. Why do you listen to? Podcasts? That's a very blank. I mean, that's a very uh, blanket statement. <laughs> Uh yeah, some of these, some of these, and some of these are. But I that's think, what I'm saying. You can apply the. I think I think it's, I think entertaining is the most blanket thing. And I think something is. I don't think something can just be entertaining. But it's fine. It's not nothing. Good. It's not nothing to really debate on. We got we got to focus on this. Anyway, <laughs> unless y'all want to, bring it on. Bring it on. I'm here for smoke. The only bro. reason I chuckled is because I forgot we were even about to discuss something specific. <laughs> like like you, I'm never running away from debate smoke. On this podcast, I don't, I don't argue with people. I don't realize it's not even. It's not worth debating. It's like, how did this even come up? <laughs> anyway, uh, but I will say, salute to Keith Lee. He's obviously, you know, a super. He seemed like a super dope individual, but, um, so we had a conversation not too long ago about online food critics, and I think you gotta give a lot of credit to them, even though people have been doing food reviews for since the beginning of time, and definitely since the beginning of like uh, that Food Network channel. I seem like there's been a resurgence of like online or people doing it online. Yeah, Keith Lee's and yeah, the brother that we were looking at the um, what's the brother's name? It's like Christian something. Yeah, and you have the uh, that frail white dude from the UK. You have all these. You have all the people that have been doing this. Do it. Do they do it to certain? Um, some people are probably just really just doing it for like a formative breakdown. Some people are putting their, their entertainment sauce on it. Some people are just naturally entertaining. <laughs> um, but. One thing that I thought when I saw some of these things is, even though you know the onus on on everyone to you know have their own opinion, some of these food critics could sway the market, and can potentially, and especially if you're going around specifically going to local shops, I think you just have to be conscious. And I think for the most part, he's incredibly conscious. Like that, the reason why I would give him so is because when you look at the way he talks to people. When he talks, I talk to people. When he talks about the businesses, how he still you know, highlights the, the good in it. He he always says, "This is just my opinion. You guys should try it for yourself, and don't ever go harass nobody. Don't ever do nothing negative." So he gives the proper disclaimers, but not everyone. But not everyone does. And even in him giving the proper disclaimers, it seems like people still got a little smoke with them. So um, with all that being said, let's watch a restaurant where he, uh, what, what's the word? He participated. He was a customer at, and what they had to say about his review. Hey, Daddy, why didn't you say it earlier? And my hair here is the video Keith Lee made of us. We've seen it. Let's try it and rate it one through ten. First and foremost, I just want to thank Keith Pause for it. acknowledging us. That was a really people are doing ratings of some people rating them. <laughs> what? Anyway, so the the restaurant is uh the Bayou Effect in Baton Rouge, uh, I'm saying hey, LA, <laughs> Louisiana. Um, and let's see what uh, they have to say about what Keith has to say about the restaurant. <laughs> that's a good that's a good uh, marketing tool sorry opportunity but we do have to come on here and tell our truth and share our experience 
And this is not to get mad at Keith Lee because he had an honest experience, but I believe it was based off what he was told and not the actual truth. Available. But when my family was going to pick up the food, they were sitting there for an hour to the point where they had to go to the counter and ask what the reason behind the wait time was. Eventually, they told him they never put the order in. Once First and foremost, we did have his order. No, um, He sent this driver in and we asked him what was the name of the order. He told us that his name was Steven. When he called in the order, he told us that his name was Kiva. <laughs> Just to clear up any confusion in regards to the store credit, it was not issued as a refund. We noted that the customer told us a different name versus what he put in, um, especially after waiting. But we just wanted to give a complimentary credit as we would do any customer that the situation might have happened to. Now, my family said the customer service was okay, was not solely based on the wait time, because we completely understand the wait time if it was based on them being extremely busy. But in this case, the wait time was strictly based on the fact the order wasn't put in. The reason that we can only assume was miscommunication. On a regular Wednesday, being mentioned by Keith Lee literally caused us to be packed. So first and foremost, we were very busy. Pause it. Keith Lee. Oh, man, I wanted to get the... <laughs> uh, maybe we should wait till we see the entire thing, but did that look like a busy restaurant? <laughs> I'm just saying that. Busy Jamaican, or Jamaican busy. Yeah. <laughs> also, this is a relatively small, it seems like a relatively small, you know, business. So, you know, just just remember the things when, we're, when you're thinking about the context of it. Keep Lee food choices, a two out of ten. This is the big part. Keep Lee, we're known for our lamb chops, although we are grateful for the items that you did try, and we know that those are delicious. Um, we just would have loved if you would have came and tried our lamb chops and things that we were known for. Hey y'all, by your pet family, Baton Rouge. I really love you guys. I appreciate you, everybody coming out. I'm so proud of my wife. And I appreciate you, Keith Lee, for coming out and supporting the Buy Your Pet. You know, we started out real small. And uh, I just appreciate everything you have done for us and this family. Man, that's what I like. Even if there's a bit of uh, drama going on, there's still love given at the end. Um, you know, there's still appreciation. Because one thing, one thing or another, it may just defeat my whole argument. Or why this could potentially be a problem is I think even if a food reviewer that's the size of Keith Lee gave or you know on the scale sorry um they gave a, like a somewhat negative review I think people are still gonna want to know well, they're still gonna want to look into it for some uh, some degree I think maybe I'm wrong anyway uh some people live and die off reviews I from what I hear um <clears throat> anyway Very true so to give the breakdown of this, and again, I don't know how common this is. Um, these uh, lovely folks at the Bayou Effects, um, that now we know because Keith Lee reviewed it. <laughs> um, they did a breakdown of Keith Lee's breakdown of their restaurant. And they cited a couple reasons why their experience might not be indicative or reflective of the general experience that they give. There was a wait, there was a wait time issue. Um, and there was a miscommunication with the naming convention. Uh, there was business due to the people knowing about the fact that Keith Lee was going to review it. And the biggest thing, um, the actual food. They, they claim that they are well known for their, um, uh, whatchamacallit, their, what was it? Lamb chops. Lamb chops. Uh, um, but apparently Keith Lee and his family ordered other items on the menu. And um, if you feel compelled, I didn't put it in there. I think I put it in Discord, but if you scroll down um, on this thing, because obviously... Oh, you got to be signed in. Well, if you're, if you're signed into X slash Twitter, um, somebody below does provide uh, the full Keekly, uh review of, of of the restaurant. So there's, there's, there's context given in the thread, just to be clear. But anyway, this definitely seems like it coincides, and you guys are going to tell me that I'm wrong, but it definitely seems like it coincides with my thought process that if you give the power to the food online online food critics, and people start getting negative perceptions about the restaurant. So, like, now people, I know, stay with me. People have people have the negative perception of one of the food items on this restaurant. When it wasn't even their, the restaurant's intention for that to be the selling point. They're selling point with the lamb chops. So you're telling me that. Thing. Why did they have it on the menu if they didn't want it to be their selling point? Or if they weren't confident in it? You know, it's funny. If you if you look in the comments, that's like one of the highest liked comments. 
<laughs> Listen, that's like asking why does McDonald's have um, the fish fillet on the menu when the highest selling thing is the nuggets and the burger? What do you mean? If I if I if I only sell if I only sell one thing, how am I gonna have a, a business that's gonna expand and grow? What do you mean? So you can have multiple things. And people will like some things more than others, but you shouldn't be that unconfident in the specific thing that you're like, oh no, that's trash. Don't 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 try that. Try this instead. Like, what do you mean? What are you saying, is <laughs> To summarize, we have a topic where basically. You're just using this to once again say why. Yeah. <laughs> you don't That's like exactly, yes. <laughs> You're still not right. Don't worry. Well, well, that I don't. The summarize summarization is a bit like leaving out a bit. But the even if you do summarize, I'll, if I'm being charitable and let you get to, get away with that. It, does anyone agree now? That's the biggest no, question. Que- no, no, <laughs> no. no. You- <laughs> Still no. I never said Doesn't no. Doesn't change anything. How does that not change anything when it, when I what I clearly called out came to be true? Like now, people's opinions are going to be swayed by this thing that the restaurant doesn't even want to promote. We knew this. We we didn't think that that wasn't going to be a consequence. That's the point. This is literally a problem with or something that has to be con- thought about in every single avenue. Of anything that gets reviewed by anyone, it is what it is. It's gonna have not some... not, a, not on a public scale like this. Really, this so changes... you're telling me they don't have public like Yelp reviews. They don't have public. They don't have public music reviews. If you see a review from Pitchfork that says, "Nah, this album is trash. Don't listen to it." You see, I'm the artist lodging a complaint against Pitchfork, like listen, saying that I'm... no, our album is actually good. You didn't listen to the right track, and this. Come on, now, like it, first, everyone has to deal with it. It is first what of it all, is. artists have definitely done that. Like, uh, do you know how much uh, hate uh, Anthony Fantano has gotten over the years because people <laughs> claim they did he didn't digest their music the way that they intended for him to digest? But that's neither here nor there because we all are intelligent and conscious enough to know the difference between online Yelp, Google, however you want to specify reviews where there's not a face to the um to the review when you have a singular content creator who has the the following they have and is known for what they're known for. Um, putting out to the world their views on these things, like the like Keith Lee and and uh, content creators like them change and change the dynamic of the way a restaurant um the like the floor of a restaurant like we, there's, there's a world in which before that restaurant they were getting like um a decent um like they were selling the item at a decent rate it might not be at their selling point but they were selling it but now that now you just put out in the world that that particular item is, is like trash it ain't it and you're willing to give my restaurant a slightly ne- more negative review because of it like how does that how does how does that how does that, how does that for the benefit of of restaurants literally it's that's always going to be a concern it's always going to like if i'm searching on google for a restaurant i want to try out and i see a bad review that says x y and z even if it's not accurate i'm going to be more disinclined to try it like it's it is what it is like. <laughs> What's fourth I, I, I don't I don't know why you're responding that way when we're in 2024. Like, what are you telling me about when you go look at the review? I'm telling you that the like the, it's they, they literally can call it like a Keith Lee effect or the, like whoever the whoever, like name a online food critic. Like they have an effect. Like it's it's a different. Of course, the reviews are for the benefit of the pers- consumer primarily. So I don't know why you keep saying what, what's the benefit for the restaurant. That is the argument, um, but at the same time, so you guys don't care if these small businesses go can potentially be hurt by these reviews. No, be clear. Quest, not really. No, <laughs> no. Just to be clear, you don't care if somebody that's their entire dream, like blood, sweat, and tears, devoted to having a restaurant because of Should've one, better. because of Should've one review. Better. How it goes. Should have been better. Go out of business all the time. Rebrand, you know, and start up again, and have Keith. I'm actually come back glad. I'm it. actually glad this is y'all sent to me because now I just know that I'm extra right. You get, you just got you just got to care about the the little guy out there that barely got uh, barely doing it, just holding on, 
that's 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 the person I really appreciate. You know what, Quest? What you are very you are very entitled to have that opinion. Like, what are you talking about? I hope you go to one of those restaurants that Keith Lee gave a bad review exactly. to. Exactly. Try like... their food. that's trash, and you'd be like, "Damn, this is trash." I should have listened to Keith Lee. <laughs> and you never it, go back the there again. Like what? What are well, you talking about? You know about? what? You know what? Saw going back. This is podcast we're talking about problem solving. You know what? Saw the problem. Get Keith Lee and um, Keith Lee's out of here. And let people just consume it for themselves, and be, and we can have a truly independent, um, or independent market, an independent competitive market. So hold not, up, hold not up. being influenced you're... by the the flavor of the week review. So if you're so about the little guy, yes, I am. Small business, yes. What about all the businesses? Which I, if I had to get say, I'd say a lot more businesses have been helped by Keith Lee than hurt. What about all of them? That business is booming now because of Keith Lee. But otherwise, they would have been a hole in the wall. No one would have knew about them. Okay, now we're bringing up the holy, like, you can't argue with them arguments. Yes, he's helped some small businesses go to, like, huge proportion. Um, okay, so you guys are saying we should accept the, the, the bad with good, like, the United States gun problem, just because we, we want the right to bear arms. So we have to accept the, the few. I think they just have some that probably can't make this joke. Um, this is- so you're saying we have to accept it? There's no You're bad about my equivalencies. You're, what are really? you talking about? I don't How, see the bad. Listen, we we can acknowledge we we can have we can all acknowledge that there's a lot of positive and that I'm kind of put something that only a I think about. Well, I mean, and this restaurant, these people probably agree with me, by the way. But anyway, um, but you can't say there's no negative. You you can't like then you just you just launch yourself. The negative is these people can negatively influence on a different scale than how it used to be. You could connect with influence um a restaurant. Based off like literally like you got the thing that the restaurant doesn't even needs even know for. Like what? He got the thing that the restaurant is not known <laughs> for. Take it off the menu, what you mean? <laughs> I mean, yes, that is a potential solution for them, but we don't long term we don't know what that type of thing could again, you get something from a restaurant you didn't like. You have the following and in, in the effect. Now people think the entire restaurant is no good. This is like I'm laying out. Uh, what about what I'm laying out? Don't make sense. That's accurate, but again, it's literally you're gonna have reviews that you might not agree with. The uh, restaurant person doesn't agree with. It is what it is. Free market, yada. Well, I would say that's causing. It's gotta the, be uh, better. I, I would say that's causing the market to not be free because now we're going based off the opinions of the. Select few food critics that were putting on this high elite pedestal that you guys are uh, you guys are lining with. You guys, how do the they elite, get there in guys, the first place? Because you guys the, are the elitists. The, uh, how trying to, they can't be elitist if they were uh, brought elevated to that level when they started off at the level everyone else and all the other free market people that are consuming this content said, "Hmm, this person is pretty credible. I'm going to value their opinion higher than everyone else's." And they got to the point they are at now. It didn't just come out of nowhere for most of them. This is true. You guys are responding with a lot of truths, but I can equally respond. If it was up to you guys, you guys would have a classist economic market system where only we would only respect the uh, opinions and we only patronize um, the select only few. Only patronize it was good. But the select few that are good. Yes. Yes. You're talking about classes. I think it's perfect the way it is. These random uh, people who get big because people um, agree with the way that they are uh, reviewing these different restaurants and they get a following from that. I don't have a problem with that. I also don't have a problem with Bayou Effect replying and saying, you know, X, Y, Z is why this happened and letting people make their own decision based on the contents of the review and the contents of the rebuttal. Like, I gotta be honest, in that response video, bro, those lamb chops in that macaroni look so good. Like, <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> I think that's a perfect place to end it. Um, yeah, obviously, nothing too serious here. I'm just, you know, I just brought it to showcase. But um, yeah, just brought it to showcase <laughs> that you were trying to be right again. <laughs> You got slick, bro. Yes, 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 yes. I no, I'm not trying to slick. I admit it. Yes, yes. That's that was my intent. Yes, you you, you caught it. Anyway, if nothing else, we can move on to the last topic. I you believe. better not have another one of these next weeks. <laughs>
I think I think uh, you only get a couple runs. I can't I can't come back in a few more. Uh, and here's the, here's my evidence B. Like it don't look like that. 